So let's please welcome to the stage Mr. Robert Rosencrantz. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good. So as I was just saying, you know, normally we're doing uh, foreign policy and defense spending debates, and tonight we're, we're going a little bit in a different direction with this discussion of the afterlife. So what, what's the thought behind putting this on this stage now? Well, one of the things that kind of got me to think that this would be a very interesting debate is a sermon I heard in a Catholic church many, many years ago in which uh, the, uh, the priest was challenging people to believe in an afterlife. And the argument he made was quasi-scientific. He said, imagine a fetus in his mother's womb that's almost ready to be born, nine month, full term baby, and you're trying to convey to this baby what's about to happen, that it's gonna have an incredibly painful experience going through the birth canal, that it's uh, ties to, uh, to its mother that, through which it's getting all kinds of nutrients and all the oxygen is gonna be severed. But not to worry, there's gonna be a great life afterwards. <laughs> There's going to be all kinds of experiences and sensory things and development and uh, emotional growth and just an incredible world of, uh, that you cannot imagine. And when you think about that, of course, you say, of course, you could, there's no way to communicate that. And there's no way that the, the baby could understand it. And yet we all know it's true. So it kind of invites you to think, is it possible that there's something that we can ima cannot imagine, that we don't understand, but nonetheless is true about life after death? I, I, I mean, I want to ask you a little a, one point about the, the approach we're taking to this, but before I get that, do you have a lot of these epiphanies in churches? <laughs> well, um, I'm Jewish, actually, but... <laughs> Um, you know, uh, the Jews do have the highest uh, resurrection rate in the world. <laughs> My question is, we're, we're not looking at this as a religious debate, speaking of which. It, it, we're, we're, we're really taking a different cut at it. No, of course, and that's what I think uh, sort of makes it much more of a factually grounded and intellectually grounded argument, and it's the reason we're doing this, is to take it away from the, the, the questions purely of faith and try to, to do as scientific an approach as we can to this topic, which obviously interests a lot of people. Well, the great thing is we have four scientists debating tonight, so let's welcome them to the stage, and thank you to Bob Rosencrantz for bringing us. Thank you, John.